In making postpartum assessments of your patients, the most important thing to begin with is observations. Observations of the room and the environment and observations of your patient. When I come in and I visit with Mrs. Brown, the first thing I notice is that she's holding her new baby. And this comes to our first big observation. How is mother and baby attaching? What is the bonding that we see between mother and baby? Some of the important concepts to look at are is this mother, is she holding her baby close to her body, which is called encompassing? Is she cuddling the baby? Has she claimed the baby? Is she calling the baby by her first name? On FOSS is another uh, common thing that we see between mother and baby where the eyes lock between mothers and babies. And these are things that I would observe for bonding. These are positive attachment behaviors and this is what we wish to see. I also then continue my assessment in asking questions of my mom. I want to know if she's been out of bed. Is she dizzy when she gets up to walk? Has she been to the bathroom? Has she any pain? Has she been medicated lately? How is the bleeding? And how is she doing just overall since this has been a big day for her and her baby? The next thing I do are vital signs. It's always important to listen to the heart and the lungs and the bowel sounds. I listen to the heart and the lungs for one minute, always, to listen for pattern irregularities or any other problems that I might hear. After I've done the vital signs, I begin the physical assessment part. And the first thing we do with postpartum patients is begin with the breasts. And if you'll remember, bubble, bubble tells us what it is that we're going to do. B stars for breast, U is for uterus, B is for bladder, B is for bowels, L is for lochia, and E is for episiotomy or epidural if they may have that. So these will be the things that I will be assessing from head to toe, front to back, which is always an important thing when you're doing your assessments. When we do the postpartum assessment, we always first walk into the room and make observations of the room and the patient. We've done this. We also then ask questions, important questions about things that we want to know about, mother or baby or whatever. But these things always precede the physical assessment aspects. But now we're going to do that. And with our mother who's postpartum, we're going to start with the breast. Okay, Mrs. Brown, let me just check your breasts here. And what we're looking for is to just see that we have no cracks, no fissures, that everything looks good, not leaking, maybe a little milk, but not any, any no blood or anything like that. Also, the breasts would feel rather soft for right now because Mrs. Brown just delivered. So your breasts are feeling okay? We move from the breast and go down to the fundus. And everything is in an order. We go from top to bottom, front to back. That way we don't forget anything. We're going to check to see that the uterus is nice and firm, which it needs to be because when it's nice and firm, that means that it's contracted. And when it contracts, the bleeding is less because it's contracting the blood vessels. So, Mrs. Brown, I'm going to have to take all this up just a minute and pull this down as well so we can see what we get. We're going to use our fingers to find the top of the uterus, which is called the fundus. Once we find it, we're going to put our hand in that position and our other hand is going to go at the bottom of the uterus. We're going to do some fundal pressure or some massage just to make sure again that that uterus is nice and firm. And at the same time, I'm looking down to see what kind of lochia I might be getting or what kind of bleeding is coming out. Or is there clots or is it just bright red blood like it should be? Mrs. Brown, you're doing great. There's your uterus is nice and firm and there's very little bleeding here, so everything looks good. You have a little swelling on the labia here, which we would certainly expect, and outside of that, everything looks great. So we're gonna cover you back up here. I've got one more thing to do while you're on your back, and that's called a Homan sign. We're going to check for blood clots. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold your knee with my hand like this and just relax your leg in my hand. I'm going to put your foot, I'm pushing back on your foot. Do you have any pain in your calf? And maybe, hopefully not. If you do, that would be some concern and you're telling me you don't, so everything is fine. This needs to be done in both legs, obviously. All right, now I need to turn you to your side so I can check you. Oh, hi, hi Dad. Hey. 
I'm going to ask you to help me turn her over because I need to look at her back. Okay. There's a couple things that we need to look at the back of every patient. We're looking to see if she had an epidural, if that incision where the epidural was or the, the place where it was put in, if that's intact still and there's not any bleeding or any fluid coming from her back. We also are looking to see if there's any pooled blood because if she bleeds too much, that goes up underneath her. So we're looking for pooled blood. We're also looking for hemorrhoids and also if there would be any swelling or any um, problems with the incision or her episiotomy, that is best seen from the back of the patient. So that's something that those four things are what we will be looking at with the back of the patient. Okay, Mrs. Brown, uh, you uh, Hubby here is going to help us turn you over so I can just take a quick look at the back of you. Okay. Okay. So our epidural site is intact. There's no fluid or anything. Everything is dry back here. That's good. There's not hardly any blood at all. Everything looks very good. And then I'm going to get my pen light just so that I can see back here a little better. And I'm going to look, and I don't see anything back here at all. Again, I'm looking at the uh, stitches, the episiotomy, and the, if there would be any hemorrhoids. And I see nothing back here, no bleeding. Everything looks great. Thank you, Dad. That's it. We'll put you back on You're your welcome. back now so that you're comfortable. And if there's anything else I can get you, you just let me know. Good morning. Hi. I'm Cheryl. I'm your postpartum nurse. Okay. And how are you doing today? We're good. Thanks. <laughs> she is so cute. Have you Thank named you. her yet? This is Brandy. Oh, she is precious. Now, is this your first one? Yes. Yeah. First little girl. And this yeah. is what you were expecting, right? A girl? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that we can know that ahead of time, I guess. Well, good. Is she eating, doing okay? Yeah. And you're breastfeeding? Yeah. Okay. So, no problems there. She's urinating and everything? Yes. Okay. How about you? Have you been out of the bed yet? Yes. They got okay. me up a couple hours after I delivered. Okay. Were you dizzy or anything when you got up? Just a little, but it passed. Okay. And did you go to the bathroom okay? Yes. Urinated all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Passing any gas yet? Uh, a little. Okay. Because that will come more later on. How okay. was the bleeding when you got up? Um, it was heavy that first time, but it slowed down. Okay, so not any clots or anything? No. And that would have been okay too if you stand up. Sometimes you have some little clots and that's okay mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. But it's bright red still? Yeah. Okay, and that will thin out and, and get clear, you know, through the weeks. But you're going to have a discharge for a while that you'll need to have something to wear, as you know. Okay. So, so when you got up, were you dizzy at all? Um, just a little, but it didn't last. Okay. Make sure when you go the next time, we do need to keep track of your urination and how much it is, but don't mm -hmm. go without someone. Okay. okay. Have the nurse. You've got your call bell, so just call and have someone there. Okay. And how is your family? Are you going to have some family here with you the rest of the day? My husband's here, and, um, and his parents are here, too. Good. Yeah. Okay. And so the same for when you go home, you'll have some help? For a little while, yeah. Good. Okay. So I guess he was at the big event then, your your yes. husband? Yes. Okay. Did your parents get to see as well, the delivery? They weren't in the room, but they were there right after. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Yeah. You can see that we have some really good mother-baby bonding here. The attachment between mother and baby is just wonderful in this scenario. We've got some on foss behavior where the mother and the baby's eyes link with each other. We've got some encompassing behavior where the baby is drawn close into the body of the mom. And she's also claimed her baby. As you notice from the very beginning, I asked about the baby's name, and her name is Brandy. So we have claimed our baby, and we have got some good maternal attachment skills to see. Hi, Betty and Dan. This is your first day postpartum. How is it going? Um, I'm okay. She's been crying a lot. Oh, and did you get any sleep last night? Not much. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, why don't I show you some steps you can take to help Brandy calm down. And we're going to use what's called the five S's from a video by Dr. Harvey Karp called The Happiest Baby on the Block. Dan, can I have Brandy from you? Yes. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the five S's, which is swaddling, side lying, shushing, swinging or jiggling, and then how to use the pacifier. And when you swaddle her, it's very important that you remember 
to wrap her tightly. You want her snuggled up like she was inside of you. And so you're gonna, how you remember to swaddle correctly is you can use the mnemonic doo-doo, which stands for down up, down up. So the first is you pull the blanket down and over and tuck underneath her other arm while you're pulling this side tight. You get her really tight and her arms need to be straight down by her side. Then you're going to pull up. So this is up. So it's been down and up now. And then this end is going to come down and you're going to hold it right here in the middle of her chest and then you're going to go up and over. And now we have Brandy swaddled. The second is sideline. Now it's very important when you do the sideline position that you figure out whether Brandy likes to be more on her side or back or more on her stomach. So it can be side or stomach. They love this. You can hold her like this. You can turn her around and hold her sideline like this. Some babies, when they have colic, they want to be up against your stomach stomach to stomach or back to stomach so that you give them their warmth but you want to find what she likes and ah there you go so she likes to be right almost straight up and down on her side if that hasn't calmed her now you can do shushing and you want to be as loud as a vacuum cleaner so you're going to put your mouth down at her ear and you're going to go shh Again, remember that you need to support her, her head and make sure you don't have fingers or thumbs on her neck. And you're gonna just shush her. Now, if that doesn't quiet her down, then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna swing or jiggle her. And babies love this. This is just like when you were walking and she was in your uterus, Betty and she was just jiggling. And you want to actually just kind of lightly let her head bobble back and forth. We don't recommend using a pacifier until you've really gotten breastfeeding established. However, you can let her suck on her hand or you can give her a gloved finger if you want to, or you guys don't have to put a glove on. You can just give her your finger in her mouth. If you're going to use a pacifier, then the proper way to use a pacifier is always have it loose. You're going to give the baby the pacifier and you don't want to hold it in. You want her to learn how to hold it in herself. So you can actually, once she's got it in her mouth, just lightly try to pull it out. This teaches her muscles to get very strong and pull that pacifier back in and keep it in. When you put her to bed with a pacifier, be sure you don't wrap it around the neck. If you want to use one of those clips, it has to be a loose clip. I don't suggest putting her down with one of those on at night. She can use her hand or her thumb to, to calm herself at night. The other thing is, is when they start getting worn or torn, be sure you dispose of them and get a new pacifier. Now, I'm just going to tell you as a midwife, I think the easiest thing is to teach them to use their hand, the side of their hand or thumb because you're not looking for one in the middle of the night to calm <laughs> your baby. So now I'm gonna let you guys practice who wants to wrap up Brandy first. Yes, I, I, I want to. All right, Thank Dad. You. And I'll just move all this stuff off here so that you can lay her down and, and okay. swaddle her. Good job. Down, remember doo doo, down. And underneath. And remember when you do that to snuggie the, there you go. Now bring the bottom up. Bottom up. And then tuck it under the shoulder. That helps keep. And remember when y'all are wrapping her, make sure that her arms are straight down. And then bring to down to the middle of the chest, put your thumb here and then come back and pull up and over that. So as you see, we did down, up, and then around, and make sure that you support that head as you wrap around. Yes. Very good. Now you yeah. can pick her up and you wanna do side. You wanna get her on her side. Oh, and that's a great position. This position. Mm -hmm. Bring her to her side. Okay. And then practice a stomach. Bring her to her 
stomach, a little bit more to the stomach. Okay. Okay. Just like this. Mm -hmm. And you actually can tilt her more. Some babies like to be more on their stomach. And I'm going to tell you that the easiest way to do this, Dad, is it, if y'all sit down in a chair because it's much easier because you ha can utilize your knees. Okay, and then you're going to do shushing. So put, remember, it has to be as loud as a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> a little bit louder. Yes, very good. <laughs> And then I'm going to get you to practice a jiggle technique, the swinging. And what I want you to do is put both hands up here on her head. And again, this is easier done in a chair. Let me get a chair so you can sit down. Okay. Sit down, Dad, right here in this chair. Okay. Now, just bring your knees together a little bit mm -hmm. and lay her down on your knees. Okay. And then you can just, if you put her feet right up against your stomach, like now this. you're just going to jiggle. There you go. Perfect. Just jiggle her back and forth. Okay. And then the last thing, if she still is not calm, you can use that pacifier. Okay. Questions. Do either of you have questions on that? It's mm -hmm. amazing. When you figure out the five S's and you find out how your baby likes to be sideline or stomach or more on the back, and you do the shushing, the swinging or jiggling, very often you don't have to use the suck. But remember, babies need to do sucking besides eating. So it's important to let them suck on either their own hand or thumb or a pacifier. Betty, Dan, and baby Brandy stayed together in the hospital for two days. During this time, they received a lot of information on care of self and the baby. Betty wanted to breastfeed her baby for at least one year, but knew very little about it. She had family members tell her all of their stories about breastfeeding and how to prepare for the experience, but not all the information was the same. The older family members talked about using a dry towel to toughen up the nipples in preparation for the sucking baby, while others insisted on pumping her breasts and feeding the bottle to the baby rather than to be tied down to the breastfeeding routine. She was grateful for their loving advice. But her desire to do what was best led her to visit with the hospital's lactation nurse. Betty was concerned about her inverted nipples and what problems it might create for successful breastfeeding. Here is what happened during her visit with Janelle, the lactation nurse. 